Let's now turn to developments in the Middle East, where seven years after the closure of its embassy in Saudi Arabia due to a diplomatic rift, Iran has confirmed it will officially reopen it this week. In a short statement on Monday, the Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman, Nasser Kanani, said Tehran's embassy in Riyadh will be reopened on Tuesday, followed by the reopening of its consulate in Jeddah and its representative office with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation a day later. The move comes in accordance with a China-brokered agreement that Iran and Saudi Arabia signed in Beijing on the 10th of March, which set a deadline of two months to reopen embassies. There is still no official confirmation of when the Saudi embassy in Tehran or its consulate in Mossad will officially reopen. And for more on this restoration of diplomatic ties, global affairs analyst Colin Zawinki joins me now from Belgium. Good to have you join us. Thank you, Precious, for having me. Now, both sides, and that's um, Iran and Saudi Arabia, have, have been locked in a proxy war for years, and that's in Yemen. There is also the battle for influence in Iraq, um, Syria, and Lebanon. Now, this, this recent um, reopening of the embassy in Saudi Arabia, will that help to... Um, bring stability to the Persian Gulf? Uh, certainly, it's, um, it's a very good uh, beginning uh, in terms of, um, you know, the wider, the broader regional uh, peace, restoring the uh, broader regional uh, peace. And uh, the underlying factor here, Precious, is, um, you know, regional uh, security. Because they know that... Um, it is in their collective best interest that peace uh, returns, because with the return of peace, uh, security will then be uh, assured. But I think they are also very, very much uh, conscious of the point that you have raised, which is um, uh, looking at um, uh, Yemen, looking at also uh, Syria, uh, because the regional peace cannot be secured if uh, there is a, a fragile truce uh, in those other uh, countries, uh, namely Yemen and, uh, and Syria. So um, one can, uh, you know, uh, assert as a matter of fact that uh, this is just the beginning of a long war that will actually lead them to a full-fledged uh, regional uh, peace and security, uh, starting with uh, Iran, and, uh, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia, and then extending it uh, ultimately to Yemen and uh, Syria. Hmm. Let's look at the significance of, of the fact that China broke out this deal. Um, Saudi Arabia has always been one of U.S. closest allies in the Gulf, but that relationship is now fractious. And we've also seen tensions between the U.S. and Iran escalate in recent times. Now, where does this leave U.S. influence in the Gulf? Well, um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we can see the uh, quiet diplomacy uh, that um, China has uh, actually played here. Uh, what essentially uh, it means is that uh, China actually identified uh, this as a low-hanging fruit for them in terms of a diplomatic win against, um, you know, uh, United States of America, whom, like you uh, rightly pointed out, has had, um, you know, some fractious uh, relationship, um, you know, with Saudi Arabia in the last uh, period. So they zeroed into it, and, uh, you know, they grabbed the opportunity uh, with both uh, arms. And now we can see this as um, an experimental, um, you know, episode, because uh, it does look like, um, you know, China is set to continue to use either the, the road and belt, um, you know, diplomacy, or this kind of, um, you know, coming in through the back door where they see that America is uh, lacking. And it's, 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 I think it's, you know, a new form of a diplomatic move because if you look at um, how uh, Turkey is actually penetrating also a number of African countries, you will see that uh, they identify where weaknesses are and then, um, you know, beef it up the, with the strengths that they bring uh, to the table. And... What it leaves uh, the United States doing is actually uh, rejigging its own, um, you know, diplomacy. Mm. But do you think that there is 
there is a perceived weakness of the Biden administration towards the Middle East, and that for that reason, perhaps we might see um, an alignment and realignment of, of ties and relations in the Middle East? Well, uh, to a large extent, uh, that assertion indeed could be supported with a number of uh, evidence on the ground. But um, I think anyone who tries to underplay um, Biden's um, you know, diplomatic uh, argument, I think the person will be doing that uh, at his own peril. Because don't forget that... Uh, Notwithstanding, um, you know, the perceive, his perceived uh, weakness, uh, there was, um, you know, a move made towards uh, Saudi Arabia uh, recently when he met with, um, you know, the, um, uh, the the heir apparent, as a matter of fact, the um, uh, the president, uh, so to speak. Um, you know, it was unexpected, but one could say that um, it was it was part of his. Uh, you know, long-term strategy of, you know, rebuilding relations. Now, it could well be that strategically, um, he is doing some preparatory work with his first stem, and one can expect to see more strength from his end, you know, towards uh, the Gulf uh, region in terms of, um, you know, recapturing uh, America's influence uh, there and using it uh, purposefully. Mm. In all of this conversation, Mr. Awake, one thing is clear, the global order is shifting um, okay. towards where and towards what. That might take quite a while to find out, but always a pleasure to speak with you, Global Affairs Absolutely. Analyst Collins Awake. Thank you. I agree with you there.